Hello friends, my name is Dr. Raja Dhar. I work as head of the department of pulmonology in Fortis Hospital in Kolkata. I am here to speak to you today about the GINA guidelines of 2020 and through the course of this 10 minute CME, I am going to talk about what has changed in the GINA guidance in the last one to two years. Let's start off by talking about something which is the most topical and important for all of you. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken the world and this country by storm and hence this is a topic which is pertinent for all of you. The first advice that comes from Gina and the recommendation to continue treating their prescribed asthma medication, especially the inhaled corticosteroid and rescue courses of oral corticosteroids during an exacerbation as prescribed. There is good evidence now that the inhaled corticosteroid not only controls your asthma, on the other hand, some inhaled corticosteroids might actually reduce viral replication in the upper airway. In patients with GINA 4 and 5 asthma, so patients with severe asthma, the biologic therapy or the oral corticosteroids also should not be stopped suddenly. However, you might want to wait before the initiation of biologics in case your doctor wants to start one for you. The second important directive about this correlation between COVID-19 and asthma is to increase the controller and reliever medication as a part of a written asthma action plan. When to seek help is another art that must be perfected by your patient. Nebulization is an aerosol generating procedure. Hence, Gina and other world, world bodies have asked to cut down nebulization because of health risk, COVID-19 risks to other individuals. The other important aerosol generating procedure related to asthma is the performance of spirometry. Hence, postpone spirometry, postpone peak flow measurement, unless it's deemed to be absolutely urgent. Oxygen therapy through nasal pump prongs, high flow nasal oxygen, non-invasive ventilation, intubation and ventilation, mechanical ventilation for patients, all of these are aerosol generating procedures. So as a healthcare worker, as a doctor, it's important for you to comply with these regulations for personal protective equipment when you have to do a spirometry, when you have to give your patient nebulization or use HFNO, etc. Important to be up to date with all the measures that's been laid out by various bodies in the world, including the World Health Organization. Let's now leave COVID-19 and let's go forward and talk about key changes. The first important change in the guidance from Gina is that ICS for Metrol is the preferred reliever for patients who are being prescribed a maintenance and a reliever therapy. So this is the paradigm change. When an inhaled drug goes in, in patients with asthma, it's important to have an inhaled corticosteroid along with it. So when do you start? This is the GINA box, which talks about changes in management. So the first one is patients with mild intermittent symptoms. So infrequent symptoms, less than twice a month, the mandate from GINA is to use as needed low-dose inhaled corticosteroid plus for metro. Other options are taking an inhaled corticosteroid whenever you use a SABA, but this is a slightly more difficult mandate in that you mix and match and you've got two inhalers to use together. The next and slightly more severe variety is when the asthma has enough symptoms that the reliever needs to be taken twice or more in a month. Here, the treatment of first choice would be a low-dose ICS with an as-needed SABA or as as and when needed inhaled corticosteroid plus for metro. Now you go to more troublesome asthma, more severe asthma, where patients have symptoms at least once a week where the rescue inhaler needs to be taken. And here, a low-dose ICS plus a lava being used as maintenance with a short-acting beta agonist used SOS. That's the conventional way of treating asthma 
or ICS for metrol at a maintenance dose with the same inhaler being used for rescue medication using one single inhaler ICS in the way of Vidacinide, Lava in the way of Formetrol, both for maintenance and for rescue medication. The other option is medium dose ICS with an as use as required Saba. Important to remember what you need to do before you start your initial controller treatment. So before you start, you need an established diagnosis of asthma. You record the level of asthma control both in the way of a peak flow reading and in the way of spirometry. Consider the triggers that are available, the triggers which might make the asthma worse. Make sure that the patient knows how to use the inhaler regularly and make sure that you've arranged follow-up. After you've started the initial controller treatment, it's important to review the patient again at two to three monthly interval. My take on this would be to do a quarterly follow-up once the patient has been, become stable on the treatment that you've given them. And then once you've established treatment and this remains for a three to six month period, you can think of stepping down on the amount of drugs that you're giving to these individuals. So this is again the asthma step up, step down management plan. And you can see the suggested initial controller treatment in adults and adolescents above the age of 12. Let me take you through this flow diagram. So if you have very mild symptoms, so symptoms less than twice a month, it's just as and when needed, low dose ICS for, for plus for metron. More than twice a month, then it's daily low dose ICS and as and when needed, low dose ICS for, for plus for metron. If symptoms are on most days with awakening at night, at least once every week, then you want a low dose ICS plus lava as maintenance with SOS ICS plus lava in the way of for metrol venusinide for rescue medication. And if you have more severe symptoms, if you have symptoms in most days, if you have awakening at night more than once a week with poor lung function, then it's medium dose ICS plus lava with SOS ICS lava and again the choice here is for metrol plus bubesinide. What about children between 6 to 11 years? So I'm not a pediatrician. However, the concept for management, the way you think about this is going to be no different for a 6 to 11 year old kid as compared to what you have in case of adults. Another question that Gina tries to answer is what is the maximum dose of ICSM for metrol? And important information carry home message for all of you in there is that the maximum recommended dose in one day is a total of 72 micrograms of formetrol, which is actually 12 inhalations of the Bidesonide formetrol turbohaler, which contains 200 micrograms of Bidesonide and 6 micrograms of formetrol. What about low dose betiomethasone and formetrol? This too can be prescribed as maintenance and reliever medication. And here, the maximum recommended total dose in a day is 48 microgram of formetrol. The assessment of symptom control is no different. So you look at GINA as assessment of asthma control table, which asks, is there daytime asthma symptoms? Is there nighttime awakening? How much of reliever SABA use? And any activity limitation due to asthma? You classify the patient into well controlled, partly controlled or uncontrolled. Another very important novelty which has come into the GINA 2020 guidance is the black box warning about a drug that all of us use in asthma often. That's Montelukas. The neuropsychiatric events, the increased chances of suicide is something which has been documented with Montelukas for a while. The nightmares, the behavioral problems in children is something that's been documented more of late. It's important to remember that Montelukas is not a drug that should be continued forever. It's important to try and stop this drug when you feel that the asthma is well controlled. A last few lines about some changes in GINA. The first that patients with an acute exacerbation will benefit from high flow nasal oxygen. The role of 
trained lay healthcare care workers and their education in helping to control the asthma is again something which has been laid down in the current guidance. Some comorbidities have come in new in this guidance. The first is obesity as the risk factor for asthma. Second, traffic related air pollution is important. So those were some of the facets that we have talked about in asthma which are important. These are changes in the 2020 guidance which I feel are important and need to be highlighted. I want you to go and look at the entire Gina site slide set if asthma is a disease you treat often. And I'll finish off wishing you all the best, all of you, the very best in the teaching and treating of patients with asthma. Goodbye and stay well.